Hi everyone, welcome to another NLP video. Today we are taking a look at the paper Few short parameter efficient fine tuning is better and cheaper than in context learning by a bunch of authors from University of North Car Carolina at Chapel Hill. This paper is about fine tuning of general purpose language models, which is an effective way to reuse what those models have learned um, and get them to work on downstream tasks which might not have large amounts of labeled training examples. There have been a number of methods proposed for fine-tuning the language models. Um, the most straightforward one and the most popular one is perhaps just fine-tuning the whole model. So taking an existing pre-trained language model such as um, GPT-2 or 3 or BERT, Roberta, T5 um, and variants of those models and then fine-tuning the whole model on a specific task. This is by far the most popular approach. However, um, when you fine-tune the model on a specific task, the model tends to be um, tends to forget information about other things that it might have learned during the pre-training process. And then you end up having this model that works very well for the target task, but it's not really usable for anything else. So you need to have and you need to train separate models for each task you might be interested in, which is not efficient. Because of this, there has been um, a lot of work in NLP in the last couple of years focusing on um, on fine-tuning methods that are requiring much less examples and they also require um, don't require training the model, um, the full model, M but maybe only part of the model or maybe th they don't require uh, fine-tuning the model at all. Two of the most popular examples are um, in-context learning, where the idea is that you um, provide a couple of prompts as part of the um, input to the model. Um, for example, if the task is to predict the sentiment of a piece of text, of a, of a sentence, what you could do is you could provide um, a couple of examples of sentences with their sentiment, for example, um, positive or negative sentiment, as inputs to the model, to the language model, such as GPT-2, GPT-3, and then afterwards providing an example without a sentiment label. And then what people have shown is that providing these prompts to the model leads to um, the model being able to utilize the knowledge of the prompts and use use them to understand a little bit what is the target of the task and then this this prompts bias the model and help it to perform well on uh, predicting the missing label so this is certainly one option that can work well in certain scenarios and then in this case the model doesn't require any um, any fine tuning at all and it can be applied for a wide variety of tasks. The limitation of this approach is that the context of the model becomes very big um, and you need to spend some more computation time on inference uh, with these big language models, which, which is, can be slow as well. And you also need to add the prompts every time. So for every task, and even if, if the model has already, let's say, predicted um, a lot of uh, a lot of sen the sentiment of a lot of sentences already, it's not able to remember the past, right? Because each context is created um, fresh and the model is frozen. So the model is not able to learn and to use those examples to improve things over the long learn run. So this is why another line of work has been focusing on uh, parameter efficient fine tuning, where the goal is to do something in the middle. So um, you want to do some fine tuning, but not fine-tuning of the whole model completely but only of a certain percentage of parameters of the model it could be as small as 0.01 percent of parameters of the model and you're gonna fine-tune those parameters or you're gonna add some th these parameters to the network as new parameters and uh, fine-tune on some examples and this might potentially give you the best of both worlds because then you are fine-tuning the model. Um, it's much more efficient because you are, the model is frozen um, and you're only changing a few of the parameters so you don't need to spend as much tra time training potentially. And you can then remember what you have observed and you can use these parameters. And what's also very neat is you could use the same model and then fine-tune the parameters 
several times for multiple tasks, like different set of um, additional parameters for multiple tasks. And in this way, you could store the model, the big model a single time, and then plug in the fine-tuned parameters flexibly when you need to target a specific task. Um, so this makes it much more efficient if you want to do things like multitask learning. So hopefully that was a useful type of introduction. And what this paper is about, it's really focusing on this parameter efficient fine tuning. They propose a new method that aims to uh, make it much better than uh, previous approaches because it has been a lot of papers on this topic already. A lot of papers, as I said, on uh, fine tuning models, a lot of papers on in context learning and parameter efficient fine tuning. But the paper is proposing a new recipe, which is called TFU, which which describes an approach to um, fine tuning of uh, parameter efficient fine tuning that is very effective, leads to very good performance outperforming previous methods. And in particular, one, one important uh, milestone seems to be uh, it's able to outperform humans on a challenging benchmark called Raft, which contains uh, 11 tasks with 50 examples each. And the task is to switch between the tasks and to be able to uh, then learn the task very quickly using the, the 50 examples. More about that in a second. But this is what, that's what we're gonna talk about today. So what does the paper do precisely? Actually, there's two uh, main contributions of the paper um, and they are in two separate places of the model. One is the uh, introduction of a novel um, parameter fine tuning, parameter specific fine tuning method called IA to the power of third or IA3. I don't know how you would pronounce this one. The way this works is IA3 method is it introduces some vectors which modify the activations of the model in very, very specific locations. So here the authors are using actually the T0 model, which is a variant of the transform uh, of the T5 model. So it's an encoder decoder model um, and it's transformer model, which transformer layers and um, self attention and encoder decoder attention. And basically what the authors do is they modify the self attention and this encoder decoder attention mechanisms, um, introducing these vectors here, LV and LK and LFF, which um, basically uh, mu are multiplied with the activation of uh, of specific locations of these layers. Um, and maybe to give you a better idea is, uh, if you're familiar with the transformer uh, layer, this is what the uh, attention mechanism looks like in the standard transformer model, like I was introduced um, in the Vaswani paper. You have the softmax and then you have the key and the query and so on and so forth. And you have this scaling factor. And what they do is they multiply, they have this uh, vector here multiplied with, uh, the um, elements, the, the value and the key here to the um, of the attention layers, and those vectors are learned. Um, they're initially um, initialized as ones, but then they are learned as as the part of the fine tuning process, and only those weights are learned during the fine tuning process. The rest of the model parameters are frozen. So it's only 0.01% of the weights of the model that are learned. And additionally, they also introduce such a vector and they um, mult multiply it with the activation of the feed forward uh, layer, part of the transformer encoder, decoder, and um, encoder layers. So here, after the nonlinearity, they apply this L feed forward learned vector. And this is basically what they do to fine tune the T0 model on different tasks. Another contribution of the authors is they also introduce a bunch of new loss terms, which seem to help to uh, pre-train the model, uh, to, sorry, to fine tune the model further. And um, I'm not going to go into much detail, but one of the loss terms, you have a normal uh, loss term here, and then you have a unlikelihood loss term. It's one of the loss terms that I introduce. And then there is another, another loss term focusing on length normalization. And you can think of this terms as an additional bias to constrain the model to stay stay in line and to produce, for example, um, outputs targeting the specific length and outputs which are, uh, so th this unlikelihood is to reduce the likelihood of incorrect choices 
being generated by the model. Those are the main contributions of the authors. And now let's move on to some experiments. The authors do uh, perform benchmarks on a bunch of few shot data sets. Um, and first of all, um, here we have a major result of the paper. And it seems that on average over a bunch of data sets, the IA3 uh, parameter efficient fine tuning method is the only one out of a bunch of different alternative uh, fine tuning methods that is able to outperform a model trained, uh, a model fine tuned on the tasks, um, meaning fine tuned as a whole. So all parameters fine tuned. So it seems that this IA3 is effective. It's able to fine tuning the small number of parameters introduced leads to improved performance in even in even better performance versus fine tuning the whole model, which is interesting. Like why would that be the case? So this is the figure two here and figure three here we have a comparison of the computational uh, requirements of different models versus accuracy. And as you can see the uh, floating point operations of the large scale language models such as GPT-3 largest one are very very high comparison to the T0 um, which is a, another approach and t few which is the current paper, gives the best trade-off of accuracy versus floating point operations necessary, for example. Meaning to suggest that TFU is an efficient approach for fine-tuning models on specific tasks. Another interesting experiment is performed on the raft dataset, which, as I said earlier, contains 11 tasks that aim to mirror real-world applications of few-shot learning. Um, each task has 50 training examples, and um, the model has to switch and learn all of them. There's a bunch of baselines. You have PET, which is um, also doing some fine-tuning, uh, the parameter-efficient fine-tuning paper, and you have GPT-3 also, which is using the um, in-context learning. And this one, I'm not sure which one it is, but it seems that TFU, which is this contribution of the current paper, outperforms the baselines by 6%. And furthermore, it is the first model capable of outperforming humans on this assumingly pretty challenging benchmark. I'm not so familiar with this particular benchmark, but it's able to outperform by several percentage points, which is impressive, meaning that the model has been able to master the 11 tasks better than humans. Um, and yeah, so in overall, this seems to be a nice approach for fine tuning a large scale pre-trained model on downstream tasks to do things like future learning, multitask learning as well, like if you have separate parameters for each task, which seems to leave, lead to state of the art performance on a lot of these data sets. So it seems very promising and the code is also available on GitHub. So I would encourage you to check it out and to uh, check out the paper. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Please like and subscribe and talk to you soon.